911, where's your emergency? Um, results Radio Town Square Media. What's the address? 5100 South Tennis Lane. A guy at his desk just collapsed on the ground. 5100 South Tennis Lane in Sioux Falls? Yep, he, he, he's unconscious. Hurry. Okay. Send an ambulance. My partner's going to send an ambulance, okay? What's the phone number you're calling from? 929. Okay, so I'm going to stay on the phone with you and ask you some questions, okay? Are you with him now? Okay. Yes. Okay. How old is he? Uh, he's probably in his late 50s. Okay. Is he awake right now? Is he awake? He's unconscious. Yeah. Okay, is he breathing? Hurry, he's, 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 he's no, Is he he's breathing? Purple. He's, he's not breathing? breathing? Okay. I don't think. A okay. little, a little, yes. Hurry. That's okay. We're going to. Is there a defibrillator available? Send someone to get it now and tell me when you have yeah, it, okay? You need it? No, we don't have one. That's here. okay. All right, listen carefully. Are you still right by him? Yes, I'm right I here. I want you to lay him flat on his back on the ground and remove any pillows yes. or anything underneath his head, okay? Yeah, he's flat on his back. Put one hand on his forehead, your other hand under his neck, and tilt his head back. Okay, it is. Put your ear next to his mouth. Can you feel or hear any breathing? Yes, he's gasping for air. Yeah. Gasping for air. Okay. All right, then. I want you to make sure that he's still flat on the ground. I want you to place the heel of your hand on his breastbone in the center of the chest, right between the nipples, okay? Put your yep. other hand on top of that. Yep. yep. You're going to pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second and two inches deep, okay? Yes. All right, tell me when you start pumping, okay? I want you guys to count those compressions out loud, okay, so I can hear you. One, two, three, four. You're going to keep doing that until they get there, okay? Yep. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Are you still doing that? Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, you're doing a great job. Let me know when they're right there in the room with you. Okay. He just pulled up. Okay. Keep going until they're in the room. Jeff, do you need spells? Oh, I can go. Okay. Come on, Mike. Come on. Come on, Mike. They're on site. They're coming down the hall. You did a great job. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye. The guy on that 911 call, the one turning purple, gasping for air, was me. My name is Mike Broderick, and on May 18th, 2017, at 319 in the afternoon, I suffered an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest at work. My heart stopped, and I died. The last thing that I remember that day is I was sitting at my desk and I spun around and filed a piece of paper and as I spun back toward the front of the desk, I became lightheaded, really lightheaded. And I remember thinking to myself, whoa, I've never felt like this before. And as I was putting my head on my arms on the desk, I heard a voice and that voice said, Mike, stand up, stand up, Mike. And as I began to push my 250 pound body off of the desk, my body crashed to the floor. And if it weren't for me standing up that day, my coworkers would never have heard me and I would not be here today. Would you know how to recognize a sudden cardiac arrest? Would you know what to do? Would you have the courage to step in and actually save a person's life? By a show of hands, how many people here know how to perform CPR? Whoa, wow, that's incredible. I mean, that's totally awesome because the only thing that is gonna save a person in cardiac arrest is starting CPR, and the use of an AED, an automated external defibrillator, to shock that person's heart back into northern uh, rhythm. Now, research has shown that hands-only CPR 
can be an effective response in a cardiac arrest. It'll continue to push the blood through the body and provide the organs and the brain with oxygen. Anyone, anyone can save a life. A sudden cardiac arrest is a life-threatening emergency that it occurs when a person's heart just stops beating. And your quick response could save that person's life. A sudden cardiac arrest is not a heart attack. It's worse. A sudden cardiac arrest is, it's, a, it's an electrical problem. The heart gets confused and then it stops beating and then the person um, will collapse because of a lack of oxygen and they won't be breathing. They may be gasping for air, kind of like you heard on the 911 call, but that's not breathing. They need CPR immediately and they need an AED, an automated external defibrillator to shock that heart back into rhythm. Now, a heart attack, on the other hand, that's a plumbing problem. And that's, that's where uh, the heart can't push the, the blood through the, the veins and the arteries because there's blockage there. And the person will be conscious. They will be awake. The heart's still beating, and you can respond and talk to them. Now, they're going to be in pain, but they do not need CPR. They do not need an AED. They do need to go to the hospital, so call 911. Now, if left untreated, that heart attack can result in a sudden or out of hospital cardiac arrest. So, over 356,000 people a year in the United States will suffer an out of hospital cardiac arrest. That's 978 people every day. One every 90 seconds. Through the course of my TEDx talk, 10 people somewhere in the United States are going to suffer an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest kills more people every year than breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, HIV, pneumonia, auto accidents, and firearms combined, combined. For every minute without CPR, a person in sudden cardiac arrest, their chances of survival will decrease by 10%. And the only things that will save it is quick response. Call 911, start CPR, look for an AED. But most importantly, it's that starting of the CPR. We can wait for the ambulance and the EMTs, and, but it'd be great to have that AED there to zap it back into a rhythm right away. Even if you have never been trained in CPR, and I, you guys didn't see, I, I, I swear, there, there's about 50% of the people out there know how to do CPR. If you're not one of them, don't be afraid to start CPR. You know why? Because any CPR is better than no CPR. Sudden cardiac arrest can happen to anyone, young, old, male, female, any nationality, teenagers, children. No discrimination when it comes to cardiac arrest. Today, only 100 out of 1,000 people who suffer an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest will survive. Well, that means 900 out of 1,000 will not survive. Now, with bystander hands-only CPR, their chances of survival will increase to 300 out of 1,000. And, and if you team up hands-only CPR with an AED, 500 out of 1,000, or a 50-50 chance. 
So where do cardiac arrests happen? 700 out of 1,000 will happen in the home. So that means the person you're going to be saving or potentially saved by starting CPR is someone you love, most likely. <laughs> Could be your spouse, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, or a friend who's visiting. 200 out of 1,000 will happen in a public setting. So that means it could be somebody that you work with or it's a friend out at, uh, that you've gone to a sporting event with or it could be a complete stranger, one of those people walking the mall or standing in line to go get into a movie theater. If it's cardiac arrest, they need CPR. And 100 out of 1,000 will happen in a nursing home. So it'll either be you or a nursing home staff member to try to save the life of that person, that grandma, that grandpa, that mom, the dad, the uncle, the aunt, or the friend. You only got to do three things. Just remember this. Call 911. Push hard and fast, 100, and, 100 to 120 beats per minute, like the song Staying Alive, Staying Alive, bum, 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 right? If you don't know the Bee Gees, YouTube it, Staying Alive. <laughs> they do it better than I do it. The other thing is to send for an AED and use the AED. But if there's not one available, Continue CPR until the EMS or the paramedics arrive. So, <clears throat> life after cardiac arrest, I can speak to this. The most painful thing was the uh, cracked sternum that I had when they did CPR. Jeff, if you're out there, you did a great job. The other toughest thing was not driving for six months because um, once you have cardiac arrest, you have to go six months without another cardiac event before you can drive. That was tough. Thanks, Jay, for driving me to work back and forth for six months. I appreciated it. The, uh, there was anxiety, uh, both for myself, my wife, and my family. You know, every time I felt lightheaded or woozy or um, short of breath, you know, whoa, is it going to happen again? But as time went on, um, as time went on, my confidence built. And so, so did the confidence of my family. Uh, it'll be five years, May 18th this year, five years without a cardiac event. <laughs> So, so the best thing, the best thing is I'm still here today celebrating life with my family and friends and making memories and being here with you tonight sharing my story. The most frequently asked question that people ask me when I tell my story to them, they go, Mike, did you see the light? My cardiologist, first question out of his mouth. No, I wanted to see the light so bad. But I didn't see the devil either. <laughs> so whose voice was it that I heard that day? Well, I'm proud to say that I am a, a Catholic and a Christian and for years, every day at the three o'clock hour, I say a set of prayers called Divine Mercy Chaplet. This is a picture of the Di Divine Mercy, and there's an inscription there that says, Jesus, I trust in you. <clears throat> and these prayers were given to St. Faustina in 1931 through visitations from Jesus. And Jesus said to her, teach others to say these prayers at the three o'clock hour, at the hour of greatest mercy. 
also happens to be the hour of his death. He told her that anyone who would say this chaplet of prayers, that he would stand between his father and the dying person, not as the just judge, but as the merciful savior. My cardiac arrest happened at 3.19 in the afternoon. The hour of great mercy. And yeah, that day I did take a few minutes and say my, say my prayers at three o'clock before my cardiac arrest. I have that picture on my cell phone and on my monitor. So whose voice was it? Well, I believe that it was either Jesus Christ himself or my guardian angel. But whoever it was, I'm thankful to be here today. Thank you. I'm also uh, thankful for my lifesavers. So those are my co-workers at the time. Chad on the left, Seth. There's Burley Mike in the middle. And then Sydney, uh, or Jeff on the outside who did the CPR. Sydney, my 911 operator. Josh and Taylor, my EMS paramedic guys who got me stabilized and got me to the Avera Heart Hospital. Thank you, Dr. Green and the EMTs for everything that they did for me and the entire staff uh, who got me through a life-changing event. <clears throat> and I'm so thankful that uh, for my family. And so um, Sean is in the middle and then my wife, Kim and Brandon and God bless them. They're, they're beautiful. They put up with a lot of crap from me and, and uh, I'm blessed to have them. And there's one other really important person that helped me through my uh, recovery. My companion, Chance. <laughs> the mini doodle. <laughs> we got him five days before my cardiac arrest. We saved him from a, a breeder. And um, so the kids named him Chance after the rapper. <laughs> I named him Chance, you know, because Rechance, you know, another Chance wasn't quite the full name, but so his name was Chance. And he and I, he sat on my lap in the, in the lounge chair for six weeks as I was getting stronger and stronger and going back. So what do I want you to take away from this TED Talk tonight? If you witness somebody collapse or you come across someone who is unconscious, if the scene is safe, go up to them, tap them on the shoulder, shout, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And if they don't say anything, if they don't respond, I want you to call 911 and put your phone on speaker. Yell for help, help, anybody, Go get a, you, go get an AED. And follow the instructions of the 911 operator and start hands-only CPR. Continue CPR until an AED arrives or the EMS and the paramedics arrive. Don't stop, keep on going because your immediate response to the situation could save their life. And finally, do me a favor. Tomorrow, when you go into work, I want you to go up to your supervisor, your vice president, your owner, and say, will you get us an AED and to provide CPR AED training to every employee? <clears throat> why? We know why because the person that you could save could be your spouse, your child, a friend, a coworker, or a complete stranger. If you need, if you needed to help someone and you had the courage to jump in, you might just hear something like this. Are they there with you? Yeah. Okay, all right, I'll let you go. You did a great job. So thank you, thank you for allowing me to share my passion 
to help and save more lives from out of hospital cardiac arrest. So listen, thank you. I hope you will put your hands to good use because it's all about the right time, the right place, the right people, and saving grace. Thank you.